Hello and welcome to another CNG Tech Byte video. My name is Marco Misenta and I'm a CNG simulation reservoir engineer. Today's video is about geothermal modeling and specifically it will be about uh, closed loop single well geothermal modeling. Here is a sketch of the process. We have a vertical well which is uh, completed in a hot formation. The idea is to inject cold water from the top of the well into the annulus of this well and reproduce the same water back to surface via the tubing of the same well without the water entering the formation. The idea here is to extract heat from the formation via conduction and exchange this heat at surface. So to model this process uh, we need essentially two things. We need uh, a wellbore model that is able to represent different uh, strings and uh, in a fully coupled way with the reservoir grid and we need of course a thermal reservoir simulator. So uh, we are going to show how with the 2022 release of uh, CMG we have a interface uh, in Builder, CMG's pre processor tool to build this type of model to characterize the uh, formation in terms of th thermal gradient and uh, to build a discretized wellbore model for the simulator stars uh, which is uh, CMG's uh, thermal simulator. The other option that will be activated by Builder for stars uh, will be the wellbore uh, model in the stars which is uh, flexible wellbore. Flexwell allows a collection of several tubing strings to be um, bundled up in an annular space in a uh, fully coupled uh, solution for uh, the well. In the reservoir we solve for mass, energy, momentum, conservation equations and for Darcy law. In the discretized well we will solve for the same conservation equations and for the pipe flow equation and everything is done in a coupled, fully coupled way. Additionally, the radial conductive heat transfer from uh, the well into the reservoir is accounted for with the heat transfer from uh, the tubing to the analyst and then the heat transfer from analyst to reservoir with the heat transfer coefficient being a function of the uh, heat, the thermal parameters of uh, the different uh, tubing strings uh, and uh, annular space. I'm going to show this in uh, a demo. So let's have a look at uh, this demo now. This is a base uh, stars uh, model that we want to turn into a closed loop single well geothermal model. At the moment, uh, there is no temperature nor pressure defined in the model. And uh, we also want to see how we can uh, change this well model from uh, a single uh, well standard uh, stars well model into a, a single well a flexible well bore model where we can uh, differentiate between analysts and uh, tubing and uh, characterize injection into the analysts and production by the tubing of the same well. Also, in this model, there is no overburden and the overburden formation may be needed in this type of modeling um, options because the heat exchange in the overburden uh, can be, of course, of uh, interest. Now, let's have a quick look at the uh, porosity and permeability of this uh, reservoir, 20% porosity and uh, a low permeability of 1 in minus 3. But like I said, uh, no definition for now of temperature and pressure. Back to components section, we can see that the only component here is uh, water. There are no other components in the model and there are, we don't need to add any other components really. So now we can navigate to an interface that's been built in order to be able to input all these missing data in one go using a graphical user interface. This interface uh, will be under the process wizard option under components. So let's go to process wizard and let's uh, expand this drop down list of uh, 
uh, previous processes that were added through the years in Builder. Along with these, now with the Builder 2022 release, we have the geothermal option as well. I'm going to pick this option and go to the next step. And here we have three sub options to choose from. The first is the uh, conventional reservoir model for uh, geothermal. The second option will be the closed loop geothermal single well and the third option will be the closed loop geothermal with a u-shaped well so in uh, this case we are going to focus on the second option only so starting from the top here we can check the option to extend the grid to include the overburden grid and uh, this will be layered in 20 additional layers this can be changed if needed the elevation of the top of the grid will be the top of the new final grid and I'm going to assume that the top will be C level so that means uh, zero elevation. For uh, distributing pressure we need to have a reference depth and this will be the top of the original grid for example a thousand meters and then we need a value of pressure at the reference depth for instance, 11,000 kPa. In uh, Show Thermal Controls, I can check this option to uh, bring up the values of thermal conductivity and heat capacity for the reservoir zone and for the overburden zone. Um, these parameters are typical standard parameters for conductivity and heat capacity that can be overwritten if needed. Now, I can go to the bottom actually of this window where we can see a table of depth subsea meters versus temperature. This is the table that will define the distribution of temperature in the reservoir and it is dependent on the geothermal gradient. You can use this table or you can copy and paste from uh, a table you may have from your data. For instance, here I've got a table uh, for a geothermal gradient curve. I can uh, copy this uh, table from, uh, for instance, Excel, enter the number of rows of my table, eight, and then uh, paste the data into Builder. Now I'm going to expand this window a bit. And uh, I go back here to this Flexwell row that I've skipped before. Here is the point where we indicate to Builder which wells have to be converted to discretized wellbore modeling option, so the flex well option. In this case, I only have one well, so I'm just going to select my existent well one well. And once I click OK, I've got additional data for the wells to be input. So first of all, here we have a check option on use analysis for injection and tubing for production and I'm going to accept this default. Cold water injection rate is defaulted to 100. I could double that to for instance 200. I'm just going to skip the installation a minute. At the bottom here of this blue line uh, area we can input the geometric characteristics of the wells in terms of the of the well really in terms of diameter. So we have the tubing diameter, inner and outer, the casing, inner and outer diameter, and the hole diameter size. Uh, these are default data. Again, this can be overwritten, but we also have a drop-down list of predefined geometric uh, values for the diameters. And I'm going to pick, for example, one of these uh, uh, tubing three and a half inch and the uh, hole size 11 inches. For the insulation thickness, I'm going to assume one inch thickness. So the insulation string in Flexwell is assumed to be associated to the tubing, so it will be a, an insulation sleeve around the tubing. Now, this is the set of data necessary for defining 
all the missing parameters that we were talking about before. Now we, we will have flexible weld board, we will, we will have extra grip blocks at the top to represent the overburden, we have the thermal characteristics of the model, and we have a geothermal gradient to distribute mm, temperature with. I'm going to click Finish. This will update the model in various sections. Let's have a quick look at the main changes that happen in the model. So we can see now that the grid has been extended indeed up to zero uh, depth for representing surface. We can see that the well has been extended as well. And we have actually now two wells. Well one has been split, let's say, into well one analysis and tubing. They sit in the same location in the grid, but one well is an injector and the other one is a producer. If we open up the well events window, we can see that the injective fluid is, of course, a water at a temperature which is defaulted to 15 Celsius. And the constraints are 200 cubic meters a day, as we said, plus there is an additional constraint on maximum BHP. For the well one tubing, this is a producer constraint on a minimum BHP. On top of this, the two wells are now belonging to the same flex well, and I can see now there is a new node here, flex well. I can double click on it just to show quickly that uh, the flex well will be organized in analysis and tubing. The analysis will be well one analysis. And here we have the properties, the thermal properties of the flex well, the heat capacity of the wall and the cement heat capacity and heat conductivities as well, and the relative roughness. So here again, we have typical data. You can uh, input your own data characteristic of your materials. If we consider the tubing um, interface, we can see the same information, but on top of that, I'd like to also highlight here the insulation outer diameter. For the tubing, like I said before, we can include an insulation string. In this simple example that I'm showing, it is assumed that the string the insulation string extends from top to bottom of the well. But this is not necessary. If the insulation string was shorter, you could do that by go and manually change the insulation outer diameter to be the same as the wall outer diameter. So it would be 0 0.089 in as many blocks here as needed. And this will set the insulation thickness to zero. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to assume that the insulation string extends all the way through the tubing, but that's not a mandatory um, option. Let's now cancel this. So I uh, go back to the main view. I just want to have a quick look at uh, pressure. You can see now the pressure is defined. And uh, temperature, we have a temperature of about uh, 18 at the top and uh, 234, 240 at the bottom of the well. Now, this model is uh, ready to be submitted to STARS, but before doing that, let's go to the IO control section, input-output section, to add some specific output parameters for flex well that we can plot in results. So I'm just going to add a row here for flex well and maybe go for all variables and then click OK. And then we go and save this model as my uh, closed loop one well without base. Okay. Before submitting the model to stars, we will uh, add some keywords that are necessary for initializing flex well. So I'm just going to get these keywords and uh, also, as I've just done, uh, opening the model in the C edit. I'm just going to go to the Wesner recurrent data, identify the uh, flexible well board definition, which is here, and input these uh, keywords here which specify the initial 
pressure, temperature, and composition of the fluid inside a flexible well bore. I will save the model. This model runs from 2020 January 1st down to last date is 2021 January 1st. So it's just a one year recirculation of water and the model is very small so I can definitely run it here and it will be a very fast uh, runtime. We can see here the model has run and you can see already from the log file that we have been injecting 200 cubic meters a day and producing as much. Uh, we can open the model in uh, results and uh, check that the two wells that belong to the same flex well are indeed injecting and producing the same rate as we can see here. They are, this is the well analyst water rate and then tubing water rate and they're both at 200 cubic meters a day. Various things can be plotted and checked in the output now, but one thing I want to highlight here is the possibility of plotting the produced and injected fluid temperature along the well by using the profile node in results and checking the data type here, flex well. I can start from the analysis and plot temperature along the analysis at a specific time step of the various available. Let's go for the last time step. This will be a plot of uh, temperature versus distance. Um, the top of the well will be here, of course, uh, and we are injecting at about 16 Celsius as expected. And this is a temperature at the bottom of the um, analysis, which is our injector. I can maybe change the color to yellow, um, red, and then uh, for uh, uh, our tubing, I can uh, plot the same thing. And here we can compare the uh, produced uh, fluid temperature, 61 Celsius, which compares to 16 uh, Celsius injection temperature, showing this increase in uh, temperature. The gap between injected and producing produced temperature of the uh, water that's been injected and produced uh, is uh, of course a function of uh, various parameters uh, related to uh, for instance the, um, the the thermal characteristics of the well, um, heat conduction and uh, um, heat capacity um, but also we have an insulation string there and uh, we have input a thickness for the insulation string maybe changing the thickness will also alter uh, this result so some sensitivity analysis on those parameters uh, could be done starting from a base model like the one we have just built thank you very much for your attention